Entertainment Tonight, the most watched entertainment news program in the world. The latest on the death of golden girl Estelle Getty. Her family shares bedside details about her final days as the beloved icon loses her battle with dementia. It's like a blowing curtain. Some days she's more with us than others. Plus, her co-stars remember their friends. She didn't say anything but yes. No matter what I said, she replied yes. But then, first, the death of icon Estelle Getty. She was perhaps one of the most beloved stars in the world, and she was a constant fixture here on Entertainment Tonight. Here are the details behind this heartbreaking news. News of the Golden Girls passing first broke on her website in a letter posted to her fans. Quote, sadly, today, July 22, 2008, at 5.35 a.m. Pacific Time, we said our last goodbyes to our little friend Estelle, who passed away and made her journey to the great beyond. Although it was a trip that she never wanted to take, she went gracefully in the comfort of her own home, surrounded by her family and her very loving caregivers. You know, Pussycat, we never had that mother-daughter talk about sex. <laughs> I'm awed every day of my life. I walk and I think, this is B. Arthur, this is Betty White, you know, this is a big number one hit show in the country. Best known as the wisecracking Sophia, the star made her last public appearance in 2000 and had been battling dementia for a number of years. Backstage at the TV Land Awards last month, Estelle's Golden Girls co-stars painted a grave picture of their friend's condition. Well, she's seen her most recently. I've talked to her and she doesn't know who Betty was and she didn't know who I was on the phone. Today, B. Arthur issued this statement, quote, Our mother-daughter relationship was one of the greatest comic duos ever and I will miss her. The internet posting was made by the star's longtime friend, Paul Chapdelaine. Quote, Estelle was a fighter. She always stood up for the underdogs, fought for equality for all, and always pictured a world filled with love and laughter, her most favorite catchphrase. Estelle would have turned 85 Friday. She survived by her two sons who were by their mother's side when she died. Quote, Estelle's legacy will live on and on through the comedy and laughter she gave to us all, which will forever keep us laughing out loud. I just remember she was always so upbeat and positive and, of course, funny. Now coming up, more of our time with Estelle through the years and the co-stars who loved her so much. Next, E.T. remembers the late Estelle Getty. She stole the show and she was our favorite, all our favorite. Estelle Getty remembered in minutes. The actress will certainly never forget the time we spent with her and the stars who knew her best. Estelle Getty would have turned 85 in just three days. Sadly, she left us just this morning. The amazing actress etched a permanent mark on television as the sassy star of the Golden Girls. Tonight, we remember the star we'll never forget in tonight's story from stage 28. What about Ma? Thank you, pussycat. We'll have to get a sitter. <laughs> When seeing her as a golden girl so in command of her talent, it's hard to believe that Estelle Getty didn't begin acting seriously until she was 55. And she was 62 when she first played Sophia. Her character may have been sure of herself, but Estelle always questioned her ability. I'm afraid, you know, I, I live with fear as a constant companion. You know, can I, can I do this week after week? Am I, am I good enough? Uh, will, will I be able to pull it off this week? Will I be able to fool them again? She bit me first. <laughs> The on-screen Joker was quite serious in this 1988 interview. And every day I'm a little scared, and every Friday I'm scared out of my wits, you know, and I keep thinking, I don't believe that I'm in this way. They find out I can't do it. She certainly fooled us, and despite her fears and humility, Estelle's co-stars told us that she more than earned her laughs. She stole the show. She had every exit line. She had, and as uh, Rue always says, Rue wanted her part like mad. She wanted Sophia. And she was our favorite, all our favorites. So she was, she was really the star of the show. I thought you had a four o'clock beauty parlor appointment. I did. They finished with me early. On Christy Brinkley, they can finish early. You need every minute they can spare. <laughs> she was really such a, an important part. You know, the whole thing. I mean, this tiny little... <laughs> yeah, Hitler. Cute. I've taken a classic and reworked it Sophia style. Thanks for the Medicare. <laughs> I've become now the spokesperson for elderly people. Now I'm not that old, but now people think I know about being 80. Okay. The Golden Girls won Estelle an Emmy and even led to a starring movie role opposite Sylvester Stallone. She truly was the living embodiment of an active senior citizen. So it was a sad irony that Estelle herself soon fell victim to the difficulties of old age. 
Those last few years on Golden Girls, for at least the last four years, Estelle began not to be able to remember her lines. And eight years ago, in what became her final interview with us, Estelle explained how memory loss had affected her life. I get lonely for the things that I can't do anymore. I mean, I have to think of everything I'm going to do, I have to think of beforehand. And she revealed why she'd been reluctant to talk about her illness. I had told several people, but I hadn't really come, come out with it because it was, I didn't know whether it would seem self-serving. It's like a blowing curtain. Some days she's more with us than others, but the curtain blows this way a little more often. I spoke with her a few months ago on the phone from New York, but she didn't know who she was talking to. Even two years ago, her quick wit occasionally sparkled. That's when her caregiver gave E.T. Estelle's message for her fans. Keep watching the Golden Girls, she said. I need the residuals. She was a pistol on screen and off. And tomorrow we're going to have much more with a star as only we can bring you. Why Estelle left Hollywood at the top of her fame. Yeah, each year I think this is it. I'm going to stop and go gracefully into that retirement. And, bless her heart, she was such a funny little thing. New Golden Girls. I really liked her very, very much. But she's not there anymore. Each year I think this is it. As Hollywood mourns the death of Golden Girl Estelle Getty, those closest to her remember their friend. I really liked her very, very much, but she's not there anymore. If you're not cutting up the obituary, sorry, I want to make sure my canasta game is still on for tomorrow. <laughs> Those are, of course, the kind of lines that made everyone a fan of Estelle Geddes. This morning, I had the chance to talk with her co-star, Rue McClanahan, about the Golden Girl. I'm so sorry about the news of your dear friend, Estelle. Well, you know, it is really, I mean, everybody is saying it's the best thing because the quality of life she had the last couple of years was very poor. I have writer's block. It is the worst feeling in the world. Try 10 days without a bowel movement sometime. <laughs> what just always struck me was how different Estelle looked in real life because she was so much younger. It got under her skin because uh, she had to put on that gray wig and have her face made up so she looked older than the other, well, all, all of us. What do you want me to do? Take you to court? Have you declared incompetent? I'm not incompetent. Once, when I laughed too hard, I had a little accident. <laughs> Estelle was, you know, a very dear friend and someone who was just so good to me when I started out in the business. Desperate Housewives creator Mark Cherry started out as a writer on The Golden Girls, and Estelle was extra special for him. I don't know, she just kind of made me feel at home, and she literally felt like my grandmother. So that's what I'll always remember about her. And Ma told me that once I started shaving, I'd never be able to stop. I was right. By the time you were 16, I could grate cheese on your knees. <laughs> Estelle's ability to deliver knockout punchlines was not lost on actor-playwright Harvey Firestein. Years before the Golden Girls, he wrote for her the role of his mother in the stage production of Torch Song Trilogy. There was something so real about her, so... Genuine. Ribs, Estelle's scene stealing gems from the Golden Girls are out on DVD, but as she told us on the set in 1992, she left Sophia at the stage door. I leave Sophia when I take off the wig and I take off the glasses and I take off the makeup and she gets left behind at the studio. I know, as you said, it's, it's really a blessing. In some cases, death can be a, a release. Yeah. And I, we just, I like to think that she's someplace just making everybody laugh. Absolutely. She truly was golden, and Estelle will be laid to rest tomorrow in a private ceremony here in Hollywood. Thank you for being a friend. Travel down the road and back again. Your heart is true. You're a pal and a confidant.